Hey everybody, Whitney McFly here, and I am so excited today because I'm finally jumping back into the 15 room dollhouse, and I'm working on the Back to the Future garage, which is located in this space right here. The last video that I did on the Back to the Future garage, I did the mini tanker desk with Doc's little scientific setup right here. The other project that I worked on initially was creating a ping pong table with the mini version of the town that Doc creates to kind of show Marty McFly his plan. We have plenty of other accessories to concentrate on. I want to show you a real working television modification today. I also wanted to highlight a couple other cool accessories that I bought for the room. In a couple weeks, I'll jump right back into the Back to the Future room and we will complete it with a full build out of the garage and all the rest of the fun stuff that goes along with it. So as always, we have plenty to do today. So let's get started. So let's talk about that tiny TV2 modification first. In the beginning of the scene, we see Marty McFly walking in and then Doc is watching the video of himself in the future. And it's quite obvious to the audience and of course to Doc that something detrimental happens to him in the future. This is a pivotal point in the movie because Doc has learned about his future and it goes against his theory, which basically just states the less you know, the better. So what I want to do is recreate that TV set that he's watching. Of course, the video camera we already have because it came with the Marty McFly action figure. So here's my little mini table. It is a fold down table, both sides fold down. It does have a drawer, the one in the movie does, doesn't, but I think that's gonna be okay. Now let's go ahead and open the Tiny TV 2 box. I did get this online and I will put the link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing one. These are not very inexpensive. It was a little bit pricier, but it's just something that I've always wanted to have a real television in the dollhouse. I did buy a couple different TVs. Ultimately, I went with this one because I can download an incredible amount of information to it, but specifically anything that I want. So, so in this case, I want to have the scene where Doc is actually talking to Marty on the video cam, just like we're seeing in the movie. So I was able to download that to this little TV. And what I really loved about it is that if I wanted to build out an entire TV box and actually set this inside of it, let's say, I could do that with this size. And of course I'm using it in a 12 scale, but it can also be used in a 124 scale. It does come with a remote. This is a 3D printed television. It comes with already pre-programmed channels on it. So if you just pull it right out, it's actually already ready to go and charged. For me, one of the main modifications that I'm gonna make is I'm gonna have to remove the little legs, which hurt my soul to clip them off, but I needed to do that. And what I will do is because they are the retro 50s style legs, I'm gonna go ahead and bag those up and I will save them for another project where I may need them. So they'll probably be recycled into something else. <laughs> You can see when I put the TV on the top without the legs, obviously it fits perfectly and it's exactly the look that we're going for. So now all I need to do is change the color. Now the one that we see Doc watching, it's probably just a golden oak wooden TV case. To get that same kind of look, I'm going to paint it in this antique gold finish, just an acrylic paint. The TV itself is a 3D printed television. They are made for you to, I didn't have to do more than two coats. And then I used my test to go around the edging of the front box to give it more of a black screen like we see in the movie. And then I did a little bit of a gold edging. Now the TV itself, the front little rectangle between the two knobs in the movie that has a little screen on it and it's painted yellow. I didn't want to paint that because I was afraid that would keep maybe the remote control from working, even though I'm not even really going to use it, but I just decided to go ahead and leave that black. Okay. And then what I need to do as well to kind of give it more of a look that we're seeing on the movie, I need an antenna. So I'm just taking some of my DOS Air clay, rolling it into a little ball basically, and then I took two nails, two miniature nails, and I popped those into the top to create the look of an antenna. And then once that air dry clay is air dry, I will paint that black and then I will glue it to the top of the television. For the wiring that is connected between the television and the camcorder, I'm taking a piece of my garden wire and I'm painting a little bit of it black, a little bit of it red, and a little bit of it white, cutting those down and twisting them together to give it the look of a camcorder 
burner wire, like an HDMI type of wiring. I did take a little tiny piece of duct tape and wrapped it around the center to give it more of an electrical wired look. And then I went ahead and glued half of the wires to the back. And then I just used a little museum wax to keep them in place on the top because I'm not gluing the camcorder to the top. I'm just gonna place the camcorder on the top and hold it down with some mini hold museum wax. And then basically this is the end result. Now, another really great accessory that I wanted to bring into the space is the bucket of paint cans and tarp that we see get lit up in flames. This will be a very easy modification. So what I'm gonna do here is I have an actual paint bucket here, just a silver paint bucket. I think this is something that you can get at Hobby Lobby or even Michael's brand new for maybe a couple dollars. And I need to first go ahead and age out this piece. And the way I'm gonna do that very simply is by taking some of my antique copper acrylic paint and a little bit of metallic colored paint. And I'm going to use, of course, a little bit of cinnamon for the rust. If you followed me for some time, you know that my favorite way to create rust is by using cinnamon. And I always get mine, my craft cinnamon, let's call it from the dollar store. And the first thing I'll do to start it off is just take some of that antique copper and do some dry brushing on just the areas of the paint bucket that would wear in that way or get rust marks on it over time from sitting in the garage and being out in the elements and maybe being washed out with water but not actually being dried. And so of course the, the bottom of the bucket, the edging, all around any areas where there might be metal seams. And I'm gonna go ahead and just dry that and just brush that right on and maybe smear it out a little bit with my fingers. <laughs> uh, that seems to be the best way to get the aged look using the, the your five finger tool. <laughs> okay, after I do that, and while the paint is still a little bit wet, I will start to sprinkle on some of my cinnamon onto that paint. And I, what I will do now is go back and forth between a little bit of my brushed aluminum colored paint, my metal finish paint, and the cinnamon. And I will just go ahead and make sure that the cinnamon, of course, is adhering to the wet paint. And then I pat it on here and there. And then it's gonna give you that nice grainy look of rust. It smells really good and it looks really good. It looks really nice and authentic. Once that's dry, I'm gonna take a little paper towel here. This is actually a real paper towel that I use to brush off or wipe off paint and water. And I'm just tearing off a little piece of that and I'm going to drape that over the side of my bucket and kind of play with it a little bit till it looks like someone just threw a tarp in in it <laughs> and what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of my ultimate white glue and a little bit of water and I'm gonna use that to crease the paper towel and get it into a position where I want it to dry in that position so that it doesn't move, but it still looks like a draped tarp that's just sitting there. Next thing I'll do is I'll take some of these paint cans. Now, I didn't make these, these are just purchased. And actually some of them were sent to me by one of our many friends and viewers, Carol. And so I'm gonna finally use these and a little paintbrush as well. And again, just taking my ultimate white glue, I'll be gluing those right in. Kind of make it look like he just threw in some buckets. Now some of these are open, which is great because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paint them on the outside as though someone was painting and the paint dripped all down the side of the cans. I'm gonna paint my little wooden paintbrush with some white paint also and put that inside and then fill in the interior of some of those buckets with white. And I'm just gonna really get messy with it so that it looks like it was actually being used to paint a mini town <laughs> just like doc made and then i'll add a little bit white to the paper towel on the outside or in this case our fake tarp right and then that's what that will look like when it's all nice and dried and then we'll be able to set that piece in the garage somewhere once everything is all in place Another great accessory that is used directly by Doc is the fire extinguisher. Now his is an older version, obviously, than what we have today. This is a movie, of course, was set in the 50s. You can see Doc's has like that old wheel valve at, 
at the top I think is what it would be called and then here this one is more like a pressure released one. I do have a couple of these in my eBay store if you're interested in them but what I'm going to do to change this basically into looking more vintage is just taking my tester silver paint and going ahead and painting it over. I'll add a little antique copper to it and I printed up an old label here that I'll go ahead and glue on. Since it's such an easy modification I'm not going to go through the entire process. Obviously I've already painted it with the silver. I've added the label to it and now I'm just dry brushing on some of that antique copper to certain areas of the entire fire extinguisher itself and I did take a dark maroon color and I did paint over the bright red hose to age that out and make it look not so bright red basically and then when it's all done I did paint the bottom of it also all right and then Voila, easy transformation, but perfect for the space that we're creating today. Okay, for the next accessory that I wanna make is the Marlin that's up on the wall in the garage. Did you know that Back to the Future actually has a Marlin up on the wall? <laughs> it's so funny what the type of things that I catch in the background as I'm really researching so I can make these rooms. And so of course I thought, oh, a Marlin and maybe some harpoons. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Here is the Marlin, you can see it right here here you never really fully see the entire fish itself but you do obviously can tell that it is a marlin and so i thought it'd be really fun to make one since i have never made a marlin before what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a couple things of course i've got my ruler here now when i looked up the average size of a marlin it said that they were the average to be about 11 feet i'm not going to do 11 feet but i I'm actually going to get close. I'm probably gonna try to do like an eight foot Marlin, but then with the nose, so from tip to fin, it's about maybe eight to nine inches. So it'll still be pretty big. And then what I'm gonna use is my Living Doll Sculpey clay. I love this clay because it is just so incredibly easy to work with. So the first thing I did was I just grabbed a big chunk and rolled it out and it looks something like this, which, oh my, looks quite inappropriate, but then it began to look like this as I started to sculpt it down and manipulate the clay. And of course I'm using several different types of tools to get this look. And my computer you can see is up in the background because I have a big Marlin that I'm just trying to imitate as much as I can here. And then you can see here, I've started adding the fins. It's starting to really feel more like a nice sized fish, a nice looking Marlin. And then I've also added the tail here. Obviously my tile is not quite big enough for for the full fish so I'll glue that on later and the other thing I did at this point this is right before I'm gonna bake it is I did take a toothpick and I just put it right into where the nose is going to be and that is actually going to be the nose of my marlin and I'm doing it that way because I don't think that I've got that skill to really make it the thinnest part of this fish without destroying it so I'm just gonna use a toothpick and then I did also take two pieces of my garden wire and I just pushed them into the underbelly to create those two really thin fins is, is what I'm guessing that they're called. And then I will, after it's baked, I will go ahead and glue those in place. And then this is what it looks like after it's baked. And then I've also glued in my toothpick nose, the two under little fins that it has. And after I've glued the fin on, and then I'm gonna go ahead and let that fully dry and also cool. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint it. Now I didn't go into all the details of the different phases of painting, but just to let you know, I did obviously go off a picture and I'm using acrylic paint on this. And then after the paint was dried, I did use a satin glaze on the top to give it a really shiny look. Now, another unusual accessory in the movie is these holes right back here. And this is right next to the door as Marty comes walking in. You can see those. Now, my guess, there's a couple things that I think they could be. It could be, you know, since Doc is a scientist, maybe they're rolled up plans to something. Uh, a little bit of metal is on the one and I can kind of see some rope hanging as well. And then I thought, well, there's a Marlin right there. So maybe these are more like harpoons or gaffs. And so I just thought I'd make a couple. I also had initially thought that they were like tools in the garage, like shovels and things like that. But I just think there's too much detail on them to be just plain shovels or rakes or something. So I'm going to go ahead and make a couple harpoons and, and one large hook. And I thought that would kind of be fun just sit in the back corner. And basically the way I did 
this was I just took a piece of square shaped or rectangle shaped trim. This is the same trim that I used when I made the ping pong table. I've got two end pieces that I'm gonna use. I have a toothpick here that's gonna be more like my spear and then I have an old fishing hook that I'll use as the larger, larger marlin hook. I'm gonna go ahead and start by cutting down my toothpick and gluing it to the top of this trim piece. And then the same with the hook. For that, I did take a tack and I pierced the tip of the trim so that I could have a little hole and then I just cut off the, the, round, the eye of the hook and then I glued that inside as well. The next thing I did was, I don't show it because I'm gonna do some sanding, but because it is square, I did go ahead and I rounded off all of the edges to give it more of an oval shape, you know, more like a tool that you would use on a fishing boat. And that took some time. And then you can see here, they're a little bit more rounded. And then I'm just taking my oak stain pen and I'm gonna restain them because of course I did sand off most of the original stain. Okay, and now they're ready for a little bit of paint. So I'm just taking a little bit of black paint. I'm gonna paint the spear so you can see it a little bit better. And then I'll paint over the red fishing hook with the black also to age it out. But also they probably weren't using a red metal <laughs> since these are supposed to be kind of vintagey. And then I have some jute here, some twine. And what I wanna do is go ahead and wrap that around to kind of give them more like fishing spears. And then what I'll do is let those fully dry with the glue and then we'll just sit those in the corner. So they don't look exactly what we see in the movie, but I think they still turned out pretty cool. And I can't wait to just include them in the garage as, you know, a background accessory. That's all we're gonna do today. I will be making more accessories than what I'm showing you today. And I also wanted to show you several of the other other accessories that I have purchased or collected or have been given to me that we'll also be using. So let's take a look at some of those. So first of all, the globe. The globe is sitting on top of what I'm guessing is an old record player and it's just sitting on top. This is a hard to see if you're not paying attention accessory, but there is a dart board and it's right to the back sitting on the garage doors. You can kind of see it right here in this clip, but if you aren't paying attention, it will just fly by. Here is a chemistry set right here here. This is a right guide chemistry set. I don't know if I'll actually use it. I feel like this would be the space to use it if I was going to. So maybe I'll find a space for that in the window. I did actually buy it for this room, but will I use it? I don't know. Obviously there's a saxophone hanging on the wall. We see it a couple times throughout the entire scene. So I thought definitely we need to have a saxophone on the wall. Here's a couple more cans of paint and some other garage type accessories. And then all of these boxes, including this one that already says Doc Brown. Now these were also sent to me by Carol, and a mini viewer and friend who thought I could use these at some point whenever I do the Back to the Future room. And I certainly will be using those. Now here's a little can of Pepsi. And if you know the movie, there's an entire scene where Marty asks for a Pepsi free and it really confuses the guy behind the counter. Here are just some old tube radio parts and tubes tube boxes and I thought that this would definitely be something that would we would find in this garage somewhere sitting off to the side so I thought we would definitely use these. An old ladder to the back also you do see a tire hanging on the wall and so I've got a couple different tires here and we'll just see which one fits better when we get to that part. And then these are just some accessories that I've also showcased it I think in the very first one. These are accessories that came with the dolls or the action figures so I definitely will be including some of these. We got the skateboard, We've got Marty's backpack. We've got Marty's electric guitar. And then these are some plans that came with the dock action figure. So we've got the flux capacitor, the night don't open till 1985 letter. And then we've got the blueprints for the house that doc lives in that no longer exists uh, in 84. But anyway, in addition, we also have Doc's goggles, and then we have the wrench. And that's because the action figure that I purchased is the one that actually hangs from the clock tower. There's a couple versions of the dolls that you can buy. Dolls or action figures, just depending on what world, world you come from. So those are all of those amazing accessories that we're gonna use, and plenty of others, you guys, but this is what I have so far. And then also, this is just to take a quick peek at the room, since I haven't really shown it in full for several weeks at least, and we're going to convert this and into the actual garage. All right, and then one quick show and tell this week for those who are interested in seeing some of the different 
fun pieces of Back to the Future memorabilia that I have. I do have this really neat photo. This is the photo that Marty carries in his pocket throughout the entire movie. This photo helps indicate to him whether or not he has a future as his siblings disappear and then ultimately he begins to disappear as well, just indicating that he may no longer exist if he can't get his parents to fall in love. <laughs> so it's great because it is a hologram photo. The siblings come and go depending on how you turn the photo. Very cool. Love that picture. All right, everybody. So that's it for this show this week. Of course, we have a ton of fun accessories that we've made today. I've shown you several other types of accessories that I've purchased or already had on hand. Next time, we'll really be doing the full build out of the entire garage. There is one major piece that is missing from the garage that I'm sure that you've noticed and are wondering about. And of course, that is the DeLorean. Now this DeLorean right here obviously is the wrong scale. It is way too small. It is 124 scale. It is actually also from the second movie and the one that we need is for Back to the Future 1. The other fun thing about this particular vehicle is that it is signed by Christopher Lloyd, Doc Brown himself, and I did have the opportunity to meet him and get this signature. It's kind of a funny story, but we'll talk about that in the next video. So I hope that you enjoyed it this week. Subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Like the video, share the video. I really appreciate you guys being here. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye!